Check the description for the following discount codes. I was chatting to a fellow um, lowrider owner the other day in like a WhatsApp group chat. And we we're talking about how we set up our heave, which is uh, our surge, sorry, which is one of the degrees of freedom you get with the low rider. You get traction loss and you get surge. So before we get too far into this, I'm going to explain what, well, DOF, for degrees of freedom, what it means, what that actually translates to, you know, when it comes to our motion sort of simulation equipment. So degrees of freedom are literally the axis on which our simulators, I'm going to use this fine Mark I Volkswagen Polo to demonstrate what I'm talking about here. So the most common degrees of freedom or DOF we get with various motion solutions is for two, two DOF up to usually six DOF. Now, I'll explain what each of those is. You've got pitch, roll, surge, yaw or traction loss, heave, sway or strafe. So what do each of those mean when it comes to a real life car? Which is obviously not what this is, but it's what we're gonna to use to demonstrate. So pitch, very simply, is either the front or the rear of the vehicle pitching either up or down, backwards or forwards. Literally that, that's your, your pitch axis. Roll is the opposite. It's the vehicle rolling side to side. So left or right. Again, very simple to understand. Surge is whether you're accelerating forwards or whether you're reversing. Again, very simple. And then we've got your or traction loss. So your is the phrase typically used when you're referring to aircraft. In you know car racing, we tend to call it traction loss. And this refers to the rear of the vehicle being able to rotate left and right. So the front of the vehicle stays fixed. Um, probably easy to show you like this. Front of the vehicle stays fixed. And the back of the vehicle will be able to slide out, just like if you're drifting you know, in a rally stage. So that's your yaw or your traction loss. Heave is when the vehicle goes up or down. So you're either heaving up because you've gone, you know, over a steep hill or you're dropping down because the ground has dropped down away from you. So that's up and down. And then finally, we've got sway or strafe. Now that is when the vehicle moves. It's a bit like, so what your, your traction loss was just the back end. Sway or strafe is when the whole vehicle can move left to right, but obviously being level like this, so left or right, rather than just the back end spinning out. So that is stray and swafe. So they are your six degrees of freedom. And depending what type of motion solution you have, you will have anywhere from two all the way up to six. A seat mover, for example, only has pitch and roll. It can only tilt you forwards and backwards, and it can only tilt you left and right. It can't surge forwards and backwards. It can't lift you up and down. It can't move fully side to side, strafing, swaying, and there's no traction loss at the back end because it's just the seat you're in that's moving you know, like this. And then you've got what I've got in the background there. I've got five degrees of freedom. So I have everything other than sway. I have traction loss, so the back end of my rig can slide out when I'm drifting, but the whole thing can't move parallel left to right. So that's the five degrees of freedom that I have. Now, the way I like to set mine up is to be as realistic as possible. This is sim racing, you know, simulation racing. We are trying to simulate real life. The very definition of, of simulation is imitation or to copy. We're trying to copy in our sim rigs real life. So whatever the car does in real life, we want to we want to imitate it, we want to copy it. So for example, under acceleration, and this is what kind of inspired me to do this video, the conversation I was having with a chap, under acceleration in real life, your vehicle always moves forward. 100% of the time, no arguments, no discussions. When you accelerate, when you put it in first gear and you put your boot down and dump the clutch, or if you're in an auto, just put your boot down, your car moves forward. That is acceleration. At no point does it ever reverse. 
just never. The only time your vehicle ever reverses is when you reverse. If I was to be sat at a set of traffic lights, my car's in first gear, and I put my foot down and to accelerate forward, and it pulled me backwards, I would instantly feel almost like a, a, a feeling of nausea because my brain expects my car to go forwards and my body, you know, I've been driving for 25 years, my body knows exactly what it feels like to accelerate forwards. And if it pulled me backwards, that would be all sorts of weird going on. In fact, you may even have experienced this a little bit um, when you're in a car park and there's other cars parked by either side of you, you've reversed in and come to a stop or you've driven in forwards and come to a stop. And then at exactly that same moment, the car that's beside you then decides to pull out or, or reverse out and you, you get this sort of feeling of Whoa, uneasiness, what's going on? Because you, in your head, you've come to a complete stop, but because you're seeing movement in your peripheral vision, for a moment, you think you're still going and it really throws you. So that's what would happen if you were, you know, accelerate, your brain goes, I'm, I'm in first gear, I'm gonna go forwards, and your car reversed. So, you know, one of, the, one of the things we're gonna talk about briefly here is, I'm gonna say things that are right and things that are wrong. And when I use the phrases right and wrong, I'm talking from a simulation point of view, from a point where we're trying to imitate or copy real life. Everyone's perfectly free to set up their motion solutions how they please. And we'll talk about, we'll get into this in a minute. That's, you know, there's no right or wrong there, but there is very much a right or wrong when it comes to accurately simulating real life. And, you know, and the best example is literally the one where we accelerate you most definitely want to be going forwards um, and not being pulled backwards. So if you're setting up your surge actuator, the, the actuator on my, on my system here that can push you forwards or pull you backwards, you most definitely, for it to be correct, want it to push you forwards under acceleration. At no point do you ever want to be in that situation where you're sat at the traffic lights in first gear and your car pulls you backwards? Or when we're sat in our sim rigs looking at our, our displays and we boot it off the line and we reverse back in our rigs by whatever our travel may be. In my case, uh, 150 mil, maybe you've got 200 mil, maybe you've got 250 mil of travel. At no point do you want to be reversing away from your displays at the moment you accelerate forwards off the line. That's going to feel just like that situation in the car park where you've stopped and the car beside you has then instantly moved off and you get that feeling of uneasiness where your brain's gone, whoa, I'm supposed to be stopped and there's something moving. It's the opposite to what you expect. And there's no amount of like tricking your brain into thinking that being pulled backwards is you accelerating forwards. It, it, you know, if you've been, if you've driven in real life for any number of years, that is ingrained into our senses. We know what accelerating forward feels like. We know that when we put our boot down, the seat that we're sat in pushes into our backs and surges us forward with whatever you know force and acceleration the car we're in can provide. It definitely doesn't at any point pull us backwards. The only time that happens is when we are in reverse. So that's a good example of right and wrong from a simulation point of view, from, you know, from an accurately trying to replicate real life point of view. So, but as I say, you, you know, everyone's welcome to set theirs up, um, you know, to have it how they like and to make it as fun as, as they wish, because with some, um, you know, motion solutions, you won't have all those degrees of freedom. You may not have a surge actuator, in which case there are other things you can do under acceleration to not accurately simulate acceleration, but to give you a physical form of feedback that you are accelerating. And we'll talk about that in a second. So how do I set my motion system up to accurately replicate real life? Well, let's go through those five degrees of freedom that I have, and I'll tell you how I do it. And for the most part, it's very simple. So the, we'll go in the same list I used earlier. The fist one, the fist one? Not the fist one. <laughs> the first one is pitch. And so as we're, you know, in our rally stage or racing around our circuit and the track or the terrain we're on goes up or down, my vertical actuators that allow me to pitch up and down simply do exactly that. When I'm going up, you know, an incline, the front of the vehicle will pitch up 
and then as we level out the back of the vehicle will level out with me and then when we come back down the front of my rig will dip down and the rear will stay up and then as we level out the rear will come down until we're level again so that's a really easy one to simulate because in real life you, your car goes up and down as you're going over the lumps and bumps and as the, the you know the track or the stage undulates and on the on the the racing rig i can do exactly the same thing now i can't simulate the full travel of real life you know if i do a jump in dirt rally and in real life that would have been a four foot jump off the ground i don't have four foot of travel i have 150 mil so i can only go 150 mil but i can at least be moved in the correct direction to imitate or copy or simulate real life so that's quite an easy one the same thing applies to roll left you know when the car tilts left and right as you're going around a, a banked corner perhaps or maybe you go up the side of a bank in dirt rally when you're not supposed to my rig will tilt me the appropriate direction either left or right by the correct amount as i've tuned it now again i only have a certain amount of travel for my actuators 150 again so i could drop 150 on the right and raise 150 on the left which surprisingly actually feels like quite a reasonable angle um but you know in, in if you were to roll your car for example i can't actually roll because this is all within the limitations of the travel we have in our systems so pitch and roll accurately represented just like they would do in real life but without the full extent of travel that we can have in real life which is you know almost infinite we can roll over and over and over um, then we get on to surge which is what i was talking about as far as acceleration goes again just like pitch and roll i can accurately imitate simulate or copy acceleration just as in real life which is whereby i accelerate forward i get pushed forward by my seat in my sim rig and it feels just like i'm accelerating in real life but within the limitations of my travel again 150 mil in real life we continue to accelerate infinitely right up to the point where the car has no more acceleration where we reach its maximum speed you know we keep going through the gears keep our foot down we'll just keep accelerating 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 until we're flat out or at a top speed in the sim rig again 150 mil of travel the best i can do is have a forward surge based on the g-force that the you know, simulated car is providing so in weaker cars it will be a gentler surge forward in you know group b rally four wheel drive audi bang a real proper you know kick up the ass of acceleration and it feels just brilliant now because we don't have infinite travel we can't just keep going what happens with my surge actuator is it very slowly and subtly returns back to the neutral position you don't feel it happening but it does it and so it's ready there so that if you were to then let off your accelerator um you're ready to then surge forward again under acceleration. Now, if you surge and let off straight away, you will feel it surge forward and you'll feel it come back relatively quickly. Now, that is obviously a touch unrealistic because whenever you're pulled back in the simulator, you're basically reversing in real life because that's the only time in real life that you ever actually get pulled backwards is in reverse. In real life, if you're accelerating and you ease off, you still continue to move forwards the whole time. You just move forward at a slower rate. But this is where we start getting into the limitations of our motion systems. It is impossible to continually be moving forward. So you have to surge forward briefly and then gently return back almost unnoticed. And if you're stabbing the throttle on and off, you will feel this sort of backwards and forwards um, oscillation almost. But I tune that reverse surge to be very very minor because again a bit like that situation in a car park where you've stopped and you know you've stopped and someone moves beside you and makes you feel a bit way being yanked backwards in your simulator when you're supposed to be traveling forwards when your eyes you know especially me and my triple screens are telling me that i'm moving forwards it feels completely wrong and totally unnatural and of course it is wrong and it is unnatural because we're not ever yoinked backwards um, under deceleration in real life but we have to work with what we have as far as braking goes actually i'm going to save braking for last um, let's move on to the traction loss traction loss is a very easy one 
um, to simulate because I have a traction loss actuator. So when the back of my car steps out in the sim, the back of my rig steps out accordingly as well. And you tune all this so that it moves as far or as little as you want it to and as aggressively or as subtly as you want it to. So yeah, traction loss, your, if I'm playing Microsoft Flight Sim, super easy to simulate because the rig can actually do it. Again, I can't simulate you know, doing a 180 or a 360, I can only move, in my case, 200 mil of travel on my traction loss uh, actuator. But it can at least, you know, throw me in the correct direction and, and stay there. And then as the car straightens up, I get thrown back to the middle. And then if I kick it out the other way, I get thrown out there and I stay there until I straighten up and then I get put back in the middle. So again, just like pitch, roll and surge, traction loss can be accurately replicated within the constraints of my travel. Uh, heave, um, again, is where we're, the car is going up and down, kind of combined with pitch, really, because it would be unusual for you to go, well, no, I suppose, actually, if you go over a speed bump, the front of your vehicle comes up, you go over, and you come back down. But, and that, you could just tilt the front and rear to do that. But the heave works in conjunction with the pitch, and so you lift up and then you lift down as you're going up and over lumps and bumps or up and over jumps. Again, in dirt rally, maybe you do a big jump and again, I can go 150 mil up in the air. The whole thing will lift up and give you that sort of arcing feeling. Um, but again, within the limitations of my travel. So they're all fairly accurately you know, reproduced um, or copied from real life. And then finally, sway is the one I don't have, which is where the whole car could literally move in parallel, front and rear wheels, side to side. So that's the only one I don't have. So that is how I have mine set up for all the degrees of freedom that can be accurately copied and replicated based on what happens in real life. The real issue with my setup and anyone's setup is how we simulate braking. And this is where we get into things that are wrong from a simulation and, and a copying real life point of view. Because we can never simulate braking, and the reason I say that is because braking is deceleration at a rate determined by how hard we press our brake pedals. So we're traveling at a set speed, whatever that, that might be, 60 miles an hour, 100 miles an hour, 30 miles an hour. We press the brake pedal, the car continues to move forward the entire time right up until we come to a complete stop. But what's happening is it's slowing down the whole time. So if I start braking when I'm doing 60, and I'm slowing down, I'm doing 30, I'm doing 20, I'm doing 10, and then I've stopped. At no point when we brake are we ever pull backwards. And this is something I see people set up with their surge actuators. Under braking, they get yanked backwards. And again, from a simulation point of view, it's wrong. That is not what happens in real life. If we touch our brake pedal while doing 60 miles an hour forward, we don't suddenly get pulled backwards. That would be really weird. And again, our bodies know what's happening. When we decelerate in real life as we're going forward and we touch the brake pedal, because we're harnessed in, our heads continue to move forward at a slightly faster pace than what our bodies are slowing down. Because it's our bodies that are being held by the harnesses and when we apply the brakes and the car starts to decelerate our bodies start to decelerate our heads still want to continue going forward um, because of momentum in inertia so you may you may say that when you get yoinked backwards in a simulator it's like being pulled back by your seat belts or your harnesses but you're never pulled back by your seat belts or harnesses in real life, except when you are reversing. When you're braking, you're still very much traveling forward the entire time, right up until the point where you come to a stop. What you're feeling is that negative G-force of deceleration as the brakes are applied and your seat belt and harnesses are holding your body. What's happening is your body, along with your head, is trying to continue to move forward at whatever speed you were moving forward at, 60 miles an hour, for example. Um, and your, your belts and your chair attached to your car are all gradually slowing down, and you feel yourself 
press into that harness or into that seat belt. And if you didn't, you know, keep your neck muscles in good order, you'd feel your head dip as it's trying to, <laughs> it's trying to continue forward in that motion as the rest of you slows down. So this is why we can't simulate braking in the simulator. We don't have any forward momentum. We never will have, you know, because we can't, <laughs> our sim rigs can't just like drive through the wall of our house and across the fields as we're racing infinitely. We can only get a small surge forwards and then we come to a stop again and very gradually return to the center. So for me, the way I simulate braking, the only thing you can replicate or, or copy or imitate in real life is that when you brake, the front of the car will ever so slightly dip down and the suspension will compress. A little, little dip like that as you're decelerating. And in fact, under acceleration, where I get that surge forward, I also have a slight squat at the rear of the car because again, that is what happens in real life. In a rear wheel drive car, the rear suspension will slightly squat. In a front wheel drive car, the front will slightly lift. So I have that little squat when I accelerate and when I brake, I have a very slight dip. Nothing too pronounced because again, the issue here is if I have the front of my rig nosedive when I'm braking, that is not what it feels like in real life. Because in the rig, for me to do that, the back of my seat would actually push me forwards and literally force my body like this, which would cause my head to tilt backwards. In real life, when you brake from any sort of speed, your head wants to continue forwards because of the inertia I mentioned earlier. The seat isn't tipping you forward aggressively. The front of the car is dipping down and the upright of your seat is ever so slightly pitching forward, but because you're already moving forward and your body wants to continue moving forward at a faster rate than the car is trying to hold you back, the very nature of deceleration, you're not forcibly pushed like, uh, like that. I hope this comes across well in the video. <laughs> I just sound like I'm making strange noises and jerking around like I'm having a fit. But, um, but yeah, so that's the problem with simulating braking. We can't ever accurately do it. So for me, I, I do a little dip at the front for braking uh, and a tiny you know, little squat at the back um, in addition to my surge for acceleration. Anything more than a little dip at the front just makes me feel wrong. As I say, 25 years of driving in real life, I know what braking feels like, as do all of you that drive in real life. We know what it feels like to decelerate. You know what it feels, if you don't have your seatbelt on, for example, and you crash your car into a wall, you go flying through the screen. You know, that forward momentum that our bodies have is, ag is aggressive. It's, it's mass, what is it, mass times acceleration is inertia or something. I can't remember the exact mathematical formula, but something like that. The faster we go, the harder we're going to fly out that windscreen and wipe ourselves out on whatever object we hit. And that is what we feel when we're braking. We feel our body's inertia trying to continue forward and the harness attached to our seat and our car holding us backwards. Again, never at any point being pulled backwards. So for me, um, I, I can't tune my surge actuator to pull me backwards under braking. It just feels com completely wrong. It feels like I've got in my car and I've put it in reverse. The same as when I see people have their sim rigs pulling backwards when they accelerate. That's the one that really sort of makes me laugh the most because it, it couldn't be any further from the truth. And because you've got a surge actuator, you absolutely should have it surge you forward because that's what you're trying to do. That's what's happening in real life. You're surging forward. You're not like the example of the traffic lights, putting it in first, dumping the clutch and it reversing. It's, you know, it's just so comical, reversing away from your displays under, like every time you accelerate and you're being pulled further away from your displays. It just doesn't make any sense at all. Um, so if you've got a surge actuator, that is the way it should be set up for a from a simulation point of view. Now, as I said earlier, when I speak about right or wrong, it's entirely up to all of us how we set up our motion systems. For me, that is how I have it set up to accurately simulate real life driving within the physical limitations of the motion system I have with my four vertical PT actuators, with my low rider 
from bulb at race at home that gives me the surge and the traction loss. I can accurately simulate all those ones I went through a little while ago. I cannot accurately simulate braking. Nobody can. Now, if you have a seat mover, it is quite common to, under acceleration, have your seat mover tilt you backwards. And under braking, have your seat mover tilt you forwards. I did exactly this when I had my two-doff seat mover. And that is in no way realistic. It's not even close. Um, again, this is where some people say, you know, you trick your brain into feeling like you're accelerating and braking. It, it doesn't trick your brain. You can get used to it by driving your simulator enough, and you can choose to have yourself tilted backwards under acceleration and tilted forward under braking as an extra form of physical feedback about what your car is doing in the simulator. It's not accurate, it's not correct, but you're, you know we're all welcome to do it, and I did as well, because in some ways it's better than no feedback about what we're doing. But what a seat mover, the, the seat mover can only really do pitch and roll. That's its two axis, it's two degrees of freedom. So if you wanted to keep the experience as simulation as possible, you know, as, as to imitate real life, to copy real life, you would only have it do pitch and roll. But because we want to add in a bit of extra something under acceleration or braking, you know, some of us, myself included, added in that extra tilt back under acceleration and that extra tilt forward under braking. But, you know, as I explained earlier in the video, that isn't what happens at all. In fact, the only time your seat actually tilts aggressively backwards in a car would be you've either just pitched right up a really steep hill or your mate in the back seat has pulled the backrest lever and you've just fallen flat flat back in his lap as you've pulled away. Um, but, you know, you have to make the most of what you've got. And if you don't have a surge actuator to accurately represent surge, then, you know, and you want to add that little bit of pitching backwards and forwards on top of the natural pitch that will occur, um, sorry, that would have been heave, the natural pitch that will occur through the, the circuit that you're on. If you want to add that extra in because you find it more fun, then of course you're all welcome to do so. Um, and then, yeah, that's, so that would be your, 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 your two-doff scenario, your seat mover. Stepping up from the seat mover usually would, would be four vertical actuators, or in some cases, three vertical actuators, two at the back, one in the middle at the front, a bit like a three-wheeler car in actual fit, a bit like a Robin Reliant. Uh, and again, with, with, with vertical actuators, you can not only do your pitch um, and your sway, but you can do your heave as well, which just adds in a third degree of freedom. But you're still limited there in the way that you can simulate you know, acceleration because there's no surge actuator. And if you wanted to simulate reverse, you know, you can't do that either. Uh, and then so you would go from vertical actuators, you would then either add in perhaps a surge actuator or maybe a traction loss actuator, depending on what systems you have. And you can see as you build up through the degrees of freedom, adding an additional actuator here and there, you can see how that enables you now to accurately simulate what happens to your car in real life. Um, or at least I hope you can see that. I hope the videos come across well enough. It looks like it's getting a bit dark in here now. Let me just turn this light up a little bit here. Um, but yeah, I just wanted to sort of explain my thoughts on how things should be set up to simulate what happens in real life. Because this is sim racing. It's simulation racing. What we strive for here is, you know, um, replicating or copying real life as much as, as possible. And so having things like surge actuators pull you backwards when you're driving forwards, you know, have yourself reverse away from your displays under acceleration is obviously not, not correct and not the right thing to do. You know, I mean, you're welcome to do it, but it, it, it isn't right from a, a simulation point of view. It should always be, you know, accelerating forward within the constraints of your limitations of travel. And really the, 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 the reverse surge is something that doesn't really when we're talking about simulation, get used because unless you are reversing, I mean, this actually, this could happen in dirt rally. If you've crashed in dirt rally, you need to reverse, you know, 
back out of the trees and onto the stage, then you would want to feel like you're going in reverse. But for most people, and certainly for circuit races where you don't tend to crash that much, or hopefully not, you won't really even use the reverse surge because you don't reverse. It'll be there simply to, you know, after surging forward under acceleration to bring you back gently to your center position, ready to surge forward under the next bout of acceleration. You know, maybe you've just come out of a corner or whatever it might be. But hopefully that's come across, you know, fairly, fairly clearly. Um, and hopefully if you've got, maybe you've bought a low rider from, from race at home and you're curious about how best to set up things like your surge, um, you know, for acceleration and, and braking, um, that may be of some, some help to you. I mean, as I say, you know, just not to upset anybody, you are all welcome to set your simulators up however you want them to be. When I talk about right and wrong throughout this video, I'm simply talking about right or wrong from a, a, a simulation point of view, from a copying real life point of view, where forward should always be forwards, backwards should always be backwards, left should be left, right should be right, up and down should be up and down, all the other axes. They should all be what they are in real life. They should never be inverted or inversed. Um, because if you've got the appropriate actuators and degrees of freedom on your simulator to replicate them, then you can do and you should do. Um, as I say, braking is the only thing we can't even remotely accurately try and simulate, aside from a slight dip at the front. And for me, that's as far as I go. So I don't get that horrible car park feeling where I'm going, oh, oh, I thought I'd stopped and it looks like I'm still moving and my stomach's just come out of my mouth. Um, yeah, that's, that's the best we can do. But anyway, I'm waffling on. Um, questions and thoughts, as always, stick them in the comments. If you disagree with me, please disagree with me politely in the comments and, and the same with other commenters. Let's not get in heated arguments about things, um, you know, especially when it comes to things that are right or wrong. When it comes to replicating real life, physics is physics. You know, it can't really be argued with. But anyway, thank you very much for watching and as always, take it easy.